Hello, Ted.
Oh, by the way, Hello, Ted. Go ahead and unmute yourself. I'm uh, growing my little Scandinavian beard. I was just on a Zoom meeting with another board about an hour and a half ago, and three of the six guys that were there have grown beards. I almost did not recognize you. <laughs> and even, even one of the women members of the board said that she's growing a beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. Well, you and I are the only ones uh, here except for Jeremy and Vukowski so far. Okay. Well, um, this uh, board that I was on for the earlier Zoom meeting is the, the project for the rebuilding of the Japanese garden in Jackson Park. Ah. And, and uh, the cherry trees are supposed to be in bloom but the park may be closed. So I'm going to go down to Hyde Park tomorrow. I have to get out of the house because the house cleaners are coming. And I'm hoping that I can see the cherry blossoms, but maybe the police are not going to allow me to be in a lakefront oh, no. park. It has, been, uh, it has been many years since I've seen that garden. I didn't know that it was being uh, rebuilt. Oh yeah, it's, it is, it's amazing. Um, we are on a major fundraising campaign with the Japanese government and uh, Yoko Ono, um, John Lennon's widow, has done an incredible uh, lotus sculpture there called Sky Landing. And so we're working with uh, some really interesting people and dealing with an 85-year-old, I think she's about 85, um, billionaire who's a crazy woman. It's been fun, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Amazing. Amazing. But the funniest things happen in these Zoom meetings. Uh, yeah, let's hope for fewer funny things. <laughs> well, you know, a dog might show up. A cat might go on your keyboard. Yeah, I don't have a cat, but uh, a child, might, a child, a child may run in and say, "I have I, to go to the bathroom." Yeah, for sure, for sure. My dog just had his dinner, so he's uh, he's kind of zonked out at the moment. Oh, there's Virginia. Yes. Speaking of little kids, <laughs> could she, maybe she doesn't have the. There's the speaker. We can almost. Your, uh, yeah, your sound, Virginia, is is very uh, distorted. And your screen seems to be frozen. This is this is why we have a test meeting. It sounds like you're playing the trumpet. That's not good. Cool. 
So Jeremy and Jody and Rita are on the uh, are on the in the meeting. They're all uh, in as attendees. Um, I just want to be sure that they can hear me. So uh, would one of you just uh, either raise your hand or pop a comment into Q and A and let me know if you can uh, hear yes, me? Yes, Jeremy, out. Jody, can you hear Ted? Yeah, Jody can. Perfect. Elizabeth can. Yeah. Oh, Elizabeth's right. there too. Good. Wonderful. 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 Thank you both. Oh, there. Virginia stopped freezing there for a minute. Thank you, Jeremy. No, I can't hear Jeremy. No, no, uh, they're 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 in as in the webinar as guests, so you won't be able to see and hear them unless I change their participation level. You control the vertical. You control the horizontal. I, I do because I, I yes, I want to I want to demonstrate to everyone how this works mm -hmm. so that uh, everyone is comfortable with it. So Virginia, you're working kind of in slow motion. And and we can't hear you. No, it sounds like you're playing the xylophone. as well um, I can uh, I can share my screen and show anything that's on the screen yes like I'm sharing the the uh, the, like the, uh, the agenda the agenda right now yes okay okay she dropped off okay I see I see your agenda because that works very well and then can you also edit your text in real time uh, yeah like, Good. can you see me delete this word? Take a look at the, take right. a look at agenda item number oh, one. Right. Yeah, that works beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. But um, in this meeting that I was in about an hour ago, um, not everybody could edit the text that you have, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, no, no. Uh, so so um, what I'm doing is as I'm waiting for the, I'm, I'm gonna explain all this when everyone comes, but what I'm doing as the trustees arrive I am changing their participation level to panelist. And as a panelist, you can control your own uh, cameras and microphones, uh, but I don't think you are able to uh, share your uh, screens. Okay. If I were to, if I were to uh, elevate you to co-host level, then I think you'd be able to share your screens. I see, so if I had a document to show, I, you would have to uh, enable me to be co-host. Correct, or you'd send it to me and I would share it, one or the okay. other. So, um, you know, if you want to test that out, you can, you can see if there's a, uh, an option in your menu to share your screen. Um, but I don't think there, I don't think you'll see that. No, I don't, I don't, I don't need that now. But um, the one thing that I've learned is that you have to be very careful as to which um, thing that you decide you're going to share. You have to make sure that like the YouTube or whatever is what, what you really want to share as opposed oh, to the thing you saw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, I'm surprised nobody else is here yet. It's only 629. <laughs> there you go. One of the first things I learned when I started working in Oak Park is that nothing starts on time. Well. Which is fine. I had a I had a history teacher in college who, if you weren't there precisely on time, you had to listen to the whole lecture outside uh, through a window. But at least I went to college in Southern California, so it wasn't that bad. So now I see, I see Jody Colo's name and I see Matt Fruth's name. And there's Matt and there's Christian. 
Christian is waving. Is he saying anything? Yes. Yep. I can hear you. Hello, Christian. How are you, David? I'm well. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. 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 How's it going, Ted? Hello. I have a beard like you now. Good. It's looking <laughs> good, actually. Let's see if I can take a closer look. I thought I almost didn't recognize him. <laughs> okay. Hello, Matt. Good evening. How are you? I'm well. I'm. There are. There is a a bath time occurring in another part of the house. So <laughs> at some point there may be other uh, screaming. I was, on, I was just on a meeting yesterday where uh, the young mother had just gotten off a 20 minute argument with her four year old as to whether she could brush her own teeth. Yes. <laughs> That That's is very. This is officially making this my eighth hour of online video meetings today. Well, how lucky! Super for you. excited <laughs> to be on my last one of the day. Oh, how lucky for you! <laughs> I don't know why everyone needs to see me. I I love a good old conference call where I can fold laundry. Well, you can turn your camera off. You can, but not with my employees, you can't really. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> there's this kind of like, why can't we see our boss? Oh, dear me. <laughs> oh, dear me. So Virginia is there, but frozen. I see her. Yeah, she, she just has, is muted. She's just okay. muted and has her camera on yet. She's having some trouble with her connectivity, sure. And Colleen, Matt just said that uh, one of the girls is going to have her bath during this meeting. Well, we're eating cake right out of the box, so. <laughs> I like awesome. your style. You gotta do what you gotta do, man. Awesome. Where, did you, where do you have a cake from? I'm jealous. Uh, well, um, John's birthday was on Friday, so we're just eating the leftovers from Oak Park Bakery. Awesome. Delicious. Hi, everybody. I miss you guys. You too. Um, so, uh, Virginia, if you can hear me, I'm going to, it seems like you're having a lot of connectivity <laughs> issues. I'm going to suggest that you try just calling into the meeting with a phone unless you think that you can um, make it work. But otherwise, we really cannot hear you, anything you're saying, or uh, really see you in any uh, reliable way from your camera. So you may want to rethink how you're participating tonight. It's up to you. Okay. So I think we're just, would be just waiting for um, Mary Ann. Matt, I'm digging your hairstyle. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun uh, with it. I have uh, was about due for a haircut the week the, the shelter order came out. And I really regret not taking up some time on St. Patrick's Day when I took off work for the primary <laughs> to go get my haircut. Because... Well, Matt, I have a, a, a wall. Uh, haircut uh, ensemble. I could drop it by your uh, your house, and your daughter could make give you your haircut. No, that's all right. they're they're enjoying s styling and putting ponytails <laughs> in it to, way too much. Yeah, <laughs> your your loyal Facebook followers do not regret you for getting to make an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I, I I I keep asking what what sorts of instruments they're using to style your hair, but. Um, love and pain and a small plastic uh, comb. Um, that Those is... are the things that dreams are made of. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, wow. I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at you. So, um, so Matt, um, 
It is at 635. Well, the only trustee better. who is not on the meeting yet is Mary Ann. Okay. Um, most of the uh, most of the members of the leadership team are here at the attendees, so they can see and see you when you're talking and hear everything we're saying. But uh, right now, you can't see or hear them unless I were to change their participation level. All of the trustees have been elevated to um, to participation level, and you have been made the co-host of the meeting. Okay. So the only difference there is that uh, the panelists, who are all the other trustees, they have total control over their own cameras and microphones, so they can turn those on and off at will. You can do the same thing, but as co-host, you can also do a few other things like share your screen if you wanted to. And then you also have the authority to, to change other people's participation level if you wanted to, like I do. Okay. Um, and, uh, so I don't see, I'm looking at the list of attendees. You can also see the list of attendees. I don't see anyone who is not uh, an employee of the library right now who's an attendee. So we don't have anyone else uh, from the community uh, that, is, that is participating. We haven't received any, uh, or at least I haven't, any email questions or comments and no one has used the form that Jody created to leave any comments. So we wouldn't have any of those to, uh, to, uh, to reply to. Uh, but when you're ready, uh, Rita is attending. She's ready to take the minutes because we have to have minutes of the meeting. So if you want to just uh, go through the, the order like we normally would uh, with roll call and all of that and approval, uh, well, we're not approving minutes tonight. Um, right. I've got the wrong agenda up there. Uh, here we are. Um, if you want to just go through it, then we can, uh, then she can take the minutes uh, as if we were going through a regular a regular meeting. Okay. We will officially call the order. Will the secretary take the roll, please? I will. Virginia Bloomshire. Virginia, are you muted? Yeah, she is. All right. Virginia appears to be present yet muted. Uh, Matt Fruth. Here. Ted Foss. Here. Christian Harris. Present. Colleen Burns. Here. All right. And Sarah Glavin is also present. All right. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, next, we'll have the community member and visitor comments. We don't, uh, I did not receive anything as David's mentioned a minute ago, a few minutes ago. Um, he didn't receive anything and we didn't get anything from the form. So we can move through that. Let me double check. All right, and then, so trustee comments. As I very much appreciate getting the daily reports from David Selleb. It really helps. Great, thank you. This is Colleen. I just wanted to very quickly say thank you to the staff that are present on this call, to all of the staff for everything that you're doing on in these uncertain and new circumstances um, to continue to foster a sense of community here in the village. Thank you. I, I had one uh, quick question, David, and I uh, just wanted to, I don't know if Billy is with us. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to in, just wanted to inquire if everyone's faring well. If you know, from a staffing standpoint, you guys are receiving any feedback about how things have been progressing during the stay-at-home order, and kind of if everyone is well, and and you know, just working through regular kind of safety checks and um, generating any updates from HR related to how things are progressing. Sure. Well, I'll uh, I'll uh, unmute Billy so uh, he can give you a little bit of an update. Billy, go ahead. There, there may be some noise in the background. I'm sorry, I, miss, I missed the question. Um, That's okay, Billy. I just was inquiring about how the staff is handling, you know, the, the transition and, and frankly, from an HR perspective, if there's anything that you think that's relevant for the board to know about, you know, everyone being well and, and kind of how things are progressing from a safety and wellness standpoint. Yeah, so I'll answer, I'll answer that in two ways. Um, one, we are um, 
offering more ways to connect. I mean, we're sen sending out a daily email to staff. Um, uh, David's doing that through the R story. Um, so, and we also are offering other ways to connect, you know, because we have the um, technology, um, uh, we, we've, we've had um, a number of our staff had the technology to be able to connect via Google Hangouts and, and video. It, I think it's made the transition into working remotely a lot, a lot um, smoother. Um, so I think for the staff that are continuing to work, I think that they're, they're remaining connected. I think they're staying relatively positive as much as we can in this, in this time. Um, for what is kind of a big question mark for me though is, is um, our hourly staff, our um, uh, and part-time staff that maybe we don't connect with as much because they're not expected to work. But I will say, here's the second part of my answer is I think what helps a lot though is that our staff have been assured is so far up to this point that as long as the library buildings are closed, they're still receiving their compensation which gives them peace of mind during this time. So I think that that also helps. Um, and we've, got, we've gotten a lot of appreciation, a lot of feedback from that. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, Billy. Any other uh, trustee comments? Just hope everybody's staying safe and well. Um, mm -hmm. I'll talk more next Tuesday, but um, just sending everybody my best. Hi, Christian. Okay. All right. Okay, so we will staff comments. Uh, David, did you have anything? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, great, uh, Virginia just uh, left a comment. I am called in, I can hear you all well, thank you. Um, Virginia, I will, uh, I see your number there and I will unmute you so that you can talk by phone. There we go. So Virginia is unmuted, we should be able to hear. Virginia, would you like to try? Yep, I'll go ahead and try. Can everybody hear me? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Woohoo! Yay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, Virginia. Nope, that's perfectly fine. That's why we do the test. Now I know where I need to be and what I need to do. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, great. Uh, so, two things. Uh, number one, uh, obviously, uh, as Virginia just mentioned, uh, uh, one of the purposes of this test meeting is to make sure that everyone is comfortable with and familiar with the Zoom virtual platform. Uh, as you can see, you can uh, participate in a number of ways with your computers so that you can use both video or other devices so that you can use both video and audio or by, or by phone, uh, in which case uh, audio is uh, the way that you can participate and communicate. Um, for the purposes of these board meetings, uh, for a few reasons, uh, chief among them being sort of to maintain as secure an environment as possible, uh, we are doing these in Zoom in a webinar format. And uh, a webinar differs from a meeting in Zoom in a couple of different important ways. Uh, in a webinar format, the host and or the co-host, and for these meetings, uh, I am the host and Matt is the co-host, uh, we can control the participation of the meeting so that um, only those who we wish to share video and share audio can do so. Uh, everyone else is uh, a guest or an attendee. They can hear everything that we're saying. They can see people who have their video turned on when they're speaking. Uh, but otherwise, they are not able to share their audio or their video. Uh, their participation would be, at that point, would be limited to either chat or Q and A. Uh, so those are, those are two separate functions in Zoom. With uh, uh, chat, we have turned off uh, so that I can, as the meeting progresses, just focus on one alternate method of communication, which would be Q and A. So at the beginning of the regular, regular meeting on Tuesday, uh, we'll take some time, either Matt or I, to explain all of this to people who might not be an employee of the library or a board member who are participating, how all of that will work. And if they have, if those members of the public have a comment or a question that they want to share, 
uh, we'll tell them that they can use the Q&A box to type that question. Uh, and then that would be read aloud during the meeting uh, by Matt Fruth. Um, there are other ways that people can submit questions and comments ahead of time. They can email them directly to me or to Matt, uh, or they can use a special Google form that Jody Colo has created for both of these meetings uh, that, we, that we list uh, in our announcements and they can submit their comments ahead of time that way. And then again, we tell people that their questions or comments will be read aloud so that they can hear them during the course of the, of the meeting. Uh, as the host uh, and also the co-host, we can share our screens. So right now you are looking at the agenda. Uh, everyone else also is looking at the agenda for our virtual test meeting. Um, and if we had other documents to share, uh, as we most likely will on Tuesday, then I'll be able to share those as well as we go through the, as we go through the meeting. Um, as uh, panelists, uh, all of the trustees, as I said, are elevated to panelist level. Uh, and again, that gives you total control over your own microphones and video. Uh, but it also lets you see who all of the other participants are. Uh, it lets you chat with them if you want. Uh, they cannot chat with you, but you can chat with them. You can see any Q&A, any questions that people submit. Uh, you could even respond if, uh, to those questions in writing if you wanted to, uh, because you as a panelist have control over the Q&A box as well. So there are a lot of things that you can do during the, during the, course, of the, during the course of the meeting. Um, so I just, I'm going to stop there. I just want to make sure there aren't any questions or concerns about the way Zoom works, about the way the webinar feature works, um, or any other questions you have about how the uh, the meeting will be conducted as we're um, as we're progressing through it next Tuesday. David, uh, this is Ted Foss. I do have a yeah. question. Um, I've now clicked on participants, which is fifteen, and they're yes. all there. Yes. And it's uh, at the bottom of the list. It says invite, mute me, raise hand. So any participant can raise his or her hand. That's correct. Okay. They can raise their hand and that, that shows a little like a Billy just raised his hand. Mm -hmm. So that shows a signal that they would like to uh, make a comment or they'd like to participate uh, perhaps audibly in some way. And that's a signal to, uh, to the host or to the panelist. And at that point, if we wanted to, we could temporarily unmute their microphone and then they would have the opportunity to speak. But, um, but I'm, again, for the, for the meeting, I'm really going to encourage people who have something that they want to say to use the Q&A box. Right. But I can see, I mean, I can see all the, the people who are on screen. There are yes. six, six of us here. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it really helps to have the list of panelists and attendees, which I've clicked on by doing uh, participants. Right. Because yes. that way I can kind of watch what they're doing. Absolutely. And again, you, you as a panelist and all the other trustees who will be panelists can, can see all the participants uh, as, uh, as they come onto the meeting. And, and if they're using a device that identifies them by name, as most of these people are, you can see their names. Some people will, will be using, maybe using a device that doesn't do that. Uh, for instance, Virginia right now is using a device that only indicates her phone number. It doesn't give us her name. So when she joined the call, I didn't know that that was Virginia until she sent in a Q&A and said um, it was Virginia. Okay, and that's the, 618, that's the 618 telephone number that says talking permitted. Okay, right, right. Okay. Now, now exactly. Now, uh, now read it, right, because I unmuted her microphone for her, right. All right, I once I knew it was Virginia, I elevated her to panelist level. So uh, Rita Earl uh, submitted a question in Q&A. Uh, it would be helpful if I could see all the attendees for those present at the meeting for the minutes. So uh, with knowing that, what I may do on Tuesday is change her participation level to, um, to, uh, to panelist level. And then she can control her microphone and camera, and, but then she can see what, what we're looking at. Now, Sarah indicated that she was going to answer this question live. Sarah, did you want to answer that question live? I was just going to say, Rita, can, do you see a participant's icon at the bottom of your screen? 
or she she's still muted, isn't she? She is. I'll unmute her. Hold on one second. I, I think that regardless of whether you're a panelist or attendee, you can still view participants. No, I cannot. So you don't see an icon at the bottom of your screen in your no, view? No, I've got chat, raise hand, and Q&A. Okay, so it does limit. I, I was on a, one of these previous today and I was an attendee and I wonder if it's another function we can toggle. So okay, I can, I can, I'll look at the settings. I know different, different platforms like go to- Use meeting. different ones. Yeah, we're, we're, there is, yeah, there is yeah, something yeah. that says share screen that says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Right, exactly. So that they, so that attendees are not able to, uh, to share whatever's going on on their, on their computer screen. That's, that's reserved for the hosts or the panelists. So that's fine. Hey, David, I, I, um, yeah, since I will have to call in, I'd prefer if we kept the attendees uh, so that only panelists can see, since that will be my home phone number that I'm calling in from. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, as I okay. say, unless, unless, you're, uh, unless, you're a part, unless you're a panelist, you won't be able to see that. I will, I will change Rita's participation on Tuesday so that she's a panelist. She'll be able to see it while she's taking minutes, but but the other people won't. Okay. Other um, other Thank questions you. or concerns about uh, about how this works? This seems to to work fine, and according to your our story today, the physical library will be closed through the end of May. So, uh, with the governor's order. Uh, to uh, shelter in place until May 30th. Uh, we are communicating. I, I, I confirmed this with Matt Fruth before we started to change any communications um, that we would be, uh, our buildings would be closed uh, through the end of, through the end of May. But that will be uh, an item for discussion for the board on Tuesday. Okay. And, um, and uh, at that point, you'll, uh, you'll see um, some of the reports pertinent to that. So if there aren't any other questions about the, how this works, how Zoom works, I could then give a, a, a little bit of a preview of the, uh, of the topics that will be on the agenda for Tuesday. Um, uh, Matt, is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. So, um, so there are, will be a number of reports that, uh, let me, well, let me back up and say that Tuesday's meeting will be conducted very much like a regular meeting would. Uh, with a lot of the, uh, the the familiar items on the agenda that you're used to seeing. Um, there will be minutes of the previous meeting to approve. There will be financial reports to review and to approve. And there will be uh, staff reports. The staff reports are going to look a little different. Uh, there will be a special report called our digital library report. And that port report will be filled with all of the work uh, and the data that we've collected about that work since our buildings have been closed on March 13th. Um, and, uh, and you'll be seeing that and be, we'll have time to discuss that. Um, I will be sending out everything ahead of time as I normally do. I expect by the end of the day, Friday, that you'll have a packet in your hand and, and the agenda to go along with the Zoom meeting information that you've already received for next Tuesday. Uh, there'll be a couple of other reports that you'll see uh, previous to uh, March. The board had, uh, uh, had asked to see an update to our room reservation uh, data. And so Mallory and other staff have prepared that report and you'll be seeing that. And, uh, and Christian Harris had asked for an update to staff demographics and you'll be seeing an update uh, to that report that Billy Treese also prepared. Uh, I will also have uh, a narrative report uh, as well. The only item, other item for business, the only other item for action then, would be the plan that uh, staff have developed, uh, primarily the leadership and management teams, uh, to prepare eventually for a phased reopening of the library's physical spaces. And I'll be providing that report and asking the board for uh, consensus approval of that report uh, to give uh, me and the staff authority to develop, or to get, I should say, to continue to develop all of the procedures and processes around that to put that in place. Uh, but um, uh, along with that, I'm gonna ask the board also for consensus on some uh, principal 
I think, uh, or important parts of that plan, which would include uh, the day that we would uh, go back uh, to the building uh, once the governor's order is lifted, uh, and also uh, the understanding that um, with this phased approach, there will be a very, very slow process uh, to reintroduce not only our staff, but uh, the members of the community back into our buildings. Um, and I just want to know, and again, you'll have the whole weekend to review that and to think about that, to send me questions about it ahead of time if you'd like, and then of course to talk about it during the virtual meeting on Tuesday. Uh, but um, at that point, it'll be very important for me and for the staff to know that we have your consensus approval around that so that we know that we're moving in the right direction and that we know that we have the board support uh, around uh, the, uh, the various elements of that phased, uh, phased approach. Um, I don't have it to show it to you tonight and, uh, and, we're, and it's not on the agenda for discussion anyway. I just wanna give you a preview of what you'll be seeing in your packet beginning tomorrow night uh, and then what you'll be discussing uh, next, uh, next Tuesday. Uh, and that's, uh, that's really gonna be it for the agenda. The only other item that I thought I might have had to share with you uh, would have been Rashida Graham Washington's uh, report, uh, her assessment report on the library's readiness to begin an anti-racism journey. Uh, but because obviously of all of the challenges of this environment that we're working in, she's needed more time to complete it. And I've said to her that that was perfectly fine. So I think we'll have that report uh, ready to review next month. So that's, uh, that's what I wanted to say as a preview for next Tuesday's meeting. Uh, if any of you have any questions about that, please I let me know. I have a peanut butter. I, I just I have, have one. Peanut butter. I have a peanut butter. Yes. Yeah, you can have some peanut butter. Could I ask? Could I ask Christian to adjust his screen so that we can see the lower part of his face? There you are. <laughs> I can set up. <laughs> All right. Any uh, any other questions? No. It's okay. Hey David, the the yeah. one thing the one thing that would be helpful, and I know you you mentioned that you've kind of gone through this. Plan. Are there any other documents or supporting materials that either ALA or any of your professional organizations are also putting out as best practices regarding kind of transitioning back into a traditional schedule, what that means for, frankly, you know, us setting standards for safety for the staff and for, you know, protocols around people that are breaking um, social distancing regulations and others. Just I want to make sure we're setting our team up for success and, and any guidance oh. you might have. Yes, absolutely. And, and yes, the answer to your question is lots, tons of stuff from all kinds of sources. And, uh, and yeah, we've been reviewing a lot of it, trying to focus on what is the, the most authoritative, the most reliable things from, the, from CDC, um, from uh, the American Library Association, from the Urban Libraries Council, uh, from, uh, from other sources, from other medical professional sources. And um, a lot of it is uh, getting more and more consistent and more and more reliable, but um, there is still a lot of uh, competing information out there to sift through, and it's taking a lot of time, and we're relying on uh, a lot of other help to do that. Uh, our, our regional library system, Rails, has been helpful doing that. Uh, the Urban Libraries Council has been helpful doing that. Uh, and we will, uh, and we, we've also, when you see the report uh, uh, that we're going to prepare and, or I'm sorry, present on Tuesday, uh, and you'll see in your board packet, um, you'll see some reference to some of the, uh, some of the documentation and other authorities that we're using for some of that information. But um, it's important to know also that, uh, and, I, and I appreciate you saying, Sarah, about keeping people safe and secure. That is the, the most important thing that we're considering as we're preparing these plans uh, for a phased reopening. Um, we are not, and I certainly are not, am not going to recommend that we do anything unless we are sure that we have the procedures, the protocols, the supplies, the materials in place to do them safely. And 
we may, as the governor of Illinois begins to shift and change his, uh, his uh, declarations and his, his mandates, uh, we may find that there's more and more uh, questions about what we're doing and why and what we're not doing and why, and maybe even more and more pressure to do things that we might not be ready to do. Um, and, uh, and again, I'm not going to recommend anything that, uh, that we, or that we begin doing anything, uh, such as providing direct contact services before we know that we're safe and can do so in a safe manner. One of the questions that came up um, by a couple of my neighbors as I passed by in a walk is that because we were not able to return our library materials to the library and they're sitting incubating in all of our houses, yeah. Um, I think that there's a little concern about, okay, these materials have been in people's homes for a month or two, yeah. and they're all going to go back to the library. How are they going to be sanitized? Well, there, there really is, what we're learning, Ted, from everything that we're reading, there really is no way to sanitize them. Mm -hmm. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to quarantine them. Right. So we are, we're in our plan, we're preparing for, uh, for place and time to quarantine the materials for whatever period of time uh, medical authorities, health authorities recommend that they be quarantined. Okay. Because to, to try to disinfect physical materials uh, would be a near impossibility, particularly because using any kind of uh, chemicals on them or, or other substances would uh, do more damage than good. Right. So as when we're ready for people to bring materials back, they will be quarantined before they are returned to circulation. Thank you. It just seemed like it, it seemed like it was a little um, overkill in their concern, but uh, well, I mean, I know I understand why people are concerned, and and again, uh, the the information we're receiving is that the uh, the the virus can live on surfaces like that for a time. But what we're also reading is that the best way to deal with that is to put things aside for a time and just let them sit still. Um, the, uh, and, and again, I'm happy to take more questions now, but uh, there was one other thing about the meeting format that I wanted to mention so that everyone under, knows that uh, this is happening. Uh, this video, I'm sorry, this meeting and the one next Tuesday are being recorded. And there will be uh, a link that can be shared after the fact uh, for anyone that wants to view and listen to uh, everything that's said uh, and done in the course of the meeting. Um, so just to you know, everything that you've been saying all night long has been recorded. Other, other questions from anyone? Uh, not at this time. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's all I have then, Matt. Okay, and I think we are ready to wrap up for the evening. Is there um, a motion to adjourn? I moved. Second. If it's been moved and seconded, um, we will, and for the purposes of clarity and all this, I think, uh, no, no, not that button, please. Um, <laughs> uh, roll call votes for all of our votes. Yes, Matt. Uh, Sarah, will you take the roll? Yes, sir. Ted Foss? Yes. Matt Firth? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Christian Harris? Yes. Colleen Burns? Yes. Virginia Bloomshire? Yes. And Sarah Glavin votes yes as well. All right, we, we are. Anne is absent. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Stay healthy. Bye. 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 You know what? Bye. Bye. Hey, look at that, buddy.